In this module, we are going to learn the concept of aggregate demand curve. Equilibrium in the economy is achieved when goods produced in the economy is equals to the goods demanded in the economy. Aggregate demand curve shows the relationship between aggregate quantity demanded and aggregate price level. The inverse relationship between aggregate output and aggregate price could be shown by quantity theory of money. Also, we will see how aggregate demand curve is derived from ISLM curves graphically and mathematically. After studying this module, you shall be able to know the concept of aggregate demand curve evolution of the concept of aggregate demand, learn how to derive it graphically, identify the mathematical equation of aggregate demand, evaluate the equation of aggregate demand from ISLM equations. Let us begin with the discussion of equilibrium condition. An economy is in equilibrium when the quantity of goods produced in the economy is equal to the demand for these goods. In other words, when aggregate demand curve intersects aggregate supply curve, we get equilibrium level of output produced or equilibrium level of income and spending and the equilibrium price level. Let us know about the history of aggregate demand curve. Before the Great Depression of 1930s, economists believed the validity of classical theory of macroeconomics, supply creates its own demand. Supply was adjustable to the changes in the economy. The major assumption of the classical model is that the economy is always at full employment, meaning that everyone who wants to work is working and all the resources are being fully used to their full capacity. The mechanism behind the working of the economy towards full employment was an invisible hand. However, after the Great Depression from 1929 to 1933, Keynes proposed that the reason behind the Great Depression is the low aggregate demand in the economy which created low levels of income and high levels of unemployment. Keynes came up with the notion of demand creates its own supply. Economists now have reconciled these two versions into short run and long run phenomena of aggregate demand. In the long run, prices are flexible, supply of goods can be altered and hence aggregate supply determines the level of income and spending in the economy. In the short run, prices are sticky and supply of goods cannot be altered and hence, aggregate demand determines the level of income and spending the economy. Moving on to the definition of aggregate demand. According to Mankiw 1992, aggregate demand is the relationship between the quantity of output demanded and the aggregate price level. According to Donbush and Fisher, 1994, the aggregate demand curve shows the combinations of the price level and level of output at which the goods and assets markets are simultaneously in equilibrium. Aggregate demand curve shows the demand side of the economy and reflects the amount of goods demanded at different levels of prices given the nominal money balances in the economy. 
aggregate demand curve is derived from IS LM curves in the output interest rate space. The AD curve is downward sloping showing the inverse relationship between output or income or spending and prices. Next, we will understand the concept of aggregate demand through quantity theory of money. The quantity theory of money is understood with the following quantity equation also known as or simply the Fisher equation MV is equals to PT where M is the stock of money in the economy, V is the velocity of circulation that is the number of times money changes hands, P stands for the average price level and T is the volume of transactions of goods and services. However, measurement of transaction of goods and services was difficult in an economy and hence T was replaced by Y that is total output produced in the economy. This brings to the new version of Fisher equation called income velocity of money given as MV is equals to PY where M is the stock of money in the economy, V is the velocity of circulation that is the number of times money changes hands, P is the average price level and Y is the total output produced in the economy. A simple rearrangement of Fisher equation gives us a relationship between real balances in the economy that is M by P and the aggregate output that is Y. M by P is equals to KY where K is equals to 1 by V which is assumed to be a constant. Thus aggregate output is shown to be inversely related to the price level for a given level of money stock. When price level is increased with no change in M, real money balances that is M by P falls. This leads to a fall in the demand for money in favor of bonds. Since demand for output is proportional to real money balances by a factor of K, aggregate demand also falls in the economy. Now let us revisit ISLM curve. IS curve shows the combinations of output and interest rates where goods market is in equilibrium. The position of IS curve is affected by the fiscal policy of the economy. IS curve is downward sloping showing a negative relationship between interest rate and output. LM curve shows the combinations of output and interest rate where money market is in equilibrium for a given price level. The position of LM curve is affected by the nominal money stock for a given price level. LM curve is upward sloping showing a positive relationship between output and interest rate. This figure shows the ISLM curves in output interest rate space where the economy attains equilibrium in goods and assets market 
simultaneously at point E naught. The equilibrium level of output in the economy is Y naught and equilibrium level of interest rate is I naught. Let us understand how to derive aggregate demand curve graphically. Aggregate demand curve is drawn in output price space. So, consider a change in price level which affects LM curve keeping IS curve unchanged. Consider a fall in price level which increases real money balances for a given money stock an increase in real money balances increases the demand for bonds in assets market thus reducing the interest rates. A lower interest rate increases the investment demand in goods market and hence an increase in aggregate spending. Thus when price level decreases aggregate spending increases providing a downward sloping aggregate demand curve. Similarly, when price level in the economy rises, real balances decrease, reducing the demand for bonds in the asset market. This increases the interest rates, making investment demand costly in the goods market. Hence, aggregate demand decreases. Thus, when price level rises, aggregate demand falls. Now, let us consider the figure. In part A, y-axis represent interest rate and x-axis represent output. In part B, y-axis represent price level and x-axis represent output. When price level decreases from P0 to P1, LM curve shifts downward from LM0 to LM1 showing a rise in real balances. IS curve remains unaffected. The two markets now clear at a new equilibrium point E1 corresponding to a new higher level of income and spending y1 in output price space with the fall in the price level from p0 to p1 aggregate income or spending increases from y0 to y1 the equilibrium moves from point e0 to e1 similarly when the price level increases from P0 to P2, LM curve shifts upward from LM0 to LM2, showing a fall in the real balances. IS curve again remains unaffected. The two markets now clear at a new equilibrium point E2 corresponding to a new lower level of income and spending Y2 in output price space with the rise in the price level from P0 to P2 aggregate income or spending decreases from Y0 to Y2. The equilibrium moves from point E0 to E2. Now joining the point of equilibrium E0, E1 and E2 in the output price space gives the aggregate demand curve for a given level of nominal money stock and the fiscal policy. Aggregate demand curve is downward sloping. That is, at higher price levels, there are lower real balances and hence lower equilibrium level of spending and output. Let us understand how aggregate demand curve is derived mathematically. 
mathematically in a closed economy equation of is curve is given as follows i is equals to a by b minus y by alpha b where i is the interest rate a is the exogenous component of aggregate demand which is unaffected by the interest rate or the level of income b is the interest responsiveness of aggregate demand and alpha is the government spending multiplier mathematically in a closed economy given the nominal money balances lm curve is represented as i is equals to 1 by ky minus m by p where m is the nominal money stock p is the price level h is the interest responsiveness of money demand and k is the income responsiveness of money demand by solving the equations of is and lm curves in terms of output y and price level p we derive the equation for aggregate demand curve which is given as follows y is equals to gamma a plus beta m by p where gamma is equals to alpha h by h plus alpha into k b and beta is equals to alpha b divided by h plus alpha into k b and gamma is greater than 0 and beta is also greater than 0 note that in the equation aggregate demand is inversely related to the price level thus aggregate demand curve is downward sloping the parameters lambda and beta are constants which depends on the parameters that affect the is and lm curves these parameters allow us to see the impact of fiscal and monetary policy changes on the aggregate demand curve note that the equation for aggregate demand shows the relationship between equilibrium level of output or spending for each level of prices given the autonomous spending in the economy a and given the nominal money stock in the economy m thus alternatively we get the equation aggregate demand curve in the terms of price level as follows p is equals to beta into m divided by y minus gamma a again we can observe that equilibrium level of output is inversely related to the price level in the economy given the autonomous spending and the nominal money stock nominal money stock that is m is related to the price level that is p in proportion of the parameter beta thus changes in nominal money stock will transform into the changes in the price level equi proportionately 
Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. In this module, aggregate demand and aggregate supply are used to determine the equilibrium levels of aggregate output and prices in the economy. The concept of aggregate demand was introduced after the Great Depression of 1930s by the economist John Maynard Keynes. Aggregate demand curve shows all the possible combinations of output and price levels where both goods market and assets market are in equilibrium. There is an inverse relationship between the output and the price level along the aggregate demand curve given the money stock and autonomous expenditure. This means at higher price level there is lower level of income and spending. Quantity theory of money provides a handy solution for understanding the mechanism behind the inverse relationship between output and price level along the aggregate demand curve. Aggregate demand curve is derived from the ISLM curves. Plotting all the points of intersection between IS and LM curves on output price space gives the aggregate demand curve. Mathematically, the equation of aggregate demand curve is derived by solving the equations for IS and LM curves in terms of price level that is P and output that is Y.